What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Calvin, the new trader, checking in for another podcast interview. Today's guest, I was actually supposed to be in person with him in Atlanta right now, but I messed around and booked the flight for the wrong day. I got introduced to him by a friend of mine, Ron, uh, who introduced us at FX Summit. So once we started talking, uh, this big crowd started forming around us. Everybody just wanted to hear what he had to say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to talk no more because this is going to be a good interview. QB Stew is in the building. What's up, QB? How you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. I'm good. And like, and like I told you earlier, don't worry about booking the wrong flight, bro. Like That's what happens when you got so much emotion. And I think motion is important. It's good to have things in motion. And uh, everything happens for a divine reason. So us meeting each other was supposed to happen. There will be another opportunity, I'm sure, down the road where we get to link in person. But I think just us getting to have that conversation and then seeing 20, 30 people start to circle around just let us know that the conversation needed to continue. So here we are, bro. I'm here excited for are. the people listening and what they're going to get out of it. I definitely agree, man. I definitely agree. So I want to start here, QB, because this was my first time being introduced to you. So let me tell you some backdrop. So I was talking to Ron like a couple days before FX Summit, and Ron was like, yo, what time are you going to get there? I get there late, and he was like, yo, I'm going to introduce you to QB. He was like, yo, he, he, he set this thing on fire. He started praying over everything. I'm like, yo, I got to meet him. So talk to me. Before we even get into trading, before we even get into anything related to uh, just finances, where did you get your spiritual background from? Like, where did that come from? Who instilled that in you? And how important is God in everything that you do, bro? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I had two parents who both uh, actively um, believe in God, but for me specifically, and I had even been baptized as, as a, a young child. But like, for me, I think there's a difference in making a decision as a man, as an adult, or as, you know, as somebody who's lived life and has experiences versus just being a, a child or an infant and being, you know, baptized. I think both are important, but it was actually like a near-death experience for me that really ma made me look at my life from almost a, a point C. And uh, I wasn't happy with like what I was seeing. And I just knew that in order to like make corrections, in order to adjust my compass, I had to like go to a captain or a navigator that was going to basically put me in the direction that I knew my life was supposed to go versus where I wanted to go. Because every every decision I was making was always based off my flesh or desires that really did not serve me. And so I was just wanting to find more sense of direction, more sense of clarity. And God has been with me every step of the way. You know, that's the most important thing is like, you're going to have friends in your life. You're going to have family in your life. You're going to have even people with relationships. Everyone's going to fall short. Everyone falls short. So that's why we all have to have God because God will not fall short. So it's like people who you ten, nine out of 10 times will be there for you and you can rely on. But there's always going to be that one out of 10 that they fall short because we're all human. And that one out of 10 is all the more reason why we got to go to God 10 out of 10. So setting the foundation of the summit and just really praying for people and really um, actively inviting God into the, into the room. He's already there present, but it's just like really just pleading for him to um, come in and just let everyone know that they made the right decision being there and investing in themselves. And that was the most important thing I could do, bro. Like, and for me to go first, I knew a lot of people wouldn't be there on time. You know, me personally, I don't even know if I would have been there on time if I didn't have to speak. So I don't hold it against anyone, but I just knew I was sent there for one reason specifically. And it was to inspire and motivate and then pray and set that as the foundation for everyone in there. So it was received well. You know, I'm grateful, bro. Like, I remember my first time public speaking and I was shaking. Like, I, I literally had to read off notes. And I was just edifying somebody for a Zoom call. But I started to realize that whether it's public speaking or talking in front of a camera, people don't see a camera or a large crowd. They see judgment. And judgment is what causes people to freeze up. Judges, judgment is what causes people to second guess their truth. And the more you work past that and through that, the more comfortable you get. And that's, once again, having a relationship with God. I know the God inside of me is always going to be greater than any giant that's in front of you. 
Man, you speaking, bro. You speaking. So I wanted to start with that foundation because that faith that you talk about and having that navigator, having somebody else to lead the way and knowing that you can't necessarily put that trust in man because man will fail you. Your journey is very unique. You were a top, highly sought after athlete, a quarterback, um, really to be exact, hence the name QB Stew. And you played professionally and something happened. And you went through some things. You went through some some trials in that area that you were dominant in. And then you got into this field of trading. I want you to walk us through that story. I just want to summarize it real quick, but I want you to walk us through that. And how did this relationship with God play such a pivotal role um, in you getting to this point in Forex where, I mean, many will call you the dream story or the success, the ideal success story that everybody's looking for, the poster child for success and getting it out of the mud. Well, what I love about having faith is when you're documenting the journey, it's just keeping receipts of promises that you know God will keep. And like for me, he put on my heart Division One out of high school. But when I graduated high school, I didn't have scholarship offers to, to any level. D1, D2, D3 can't even offer you. But like I wasn't even getting talked to by basically any coaches. And so I had to take the leap of faith on myself and on what God had put on my heart to go to junior college. So I go to junior college for two years. Mind you, the second year is basically like now or never. You know, and at this point, I'm I'm a sophomore in college. I played my first year. I did like half quarterback, half receiver. Uh, we didn't win a single game. And this is in Kansas, too. So I'm leaving my home city of Alexandria, Virginia, to go to the middle of Kansas, which the only time I had ever seen Kansas was like in the movie Wizard of Oz. Right. So I go out there and I'm taking the leap of faith like, OK, I got two seasons to try to get recruited. In my second season, going into the second game, we're down in Tyler, Texas. I had like six touchdowns in this game. But I go to throw a pass and I get like basically uh, hip tossed onto my shoulder and my AC joint completely separates. It was like a grade two or almost three separation of my left shoulder. So now for every practice and every game, they're having to tape my left shoulder into place. And it's like all it takes is a hit or even uh, a teammate saying good job, slapping me on my shoulder for me to be immediately feeling some type of pain. And even throwing, you still got to use your left arm to throw and navigate a lot of times more so than uh, just your right. So I say all that to say is like throughout throughout um, these visions, throughout these journeys, there's going to be tests that come along the way that will prove the authenticity of what you're saying you believe should happen. And so me saying, I'm going to go D1, I'm going to go D1, I'm going to go D1, and then having to face the adversity of not winning a game my freshman year, and then having a separated shoulder seat by game two of my sophomore year, and you have to make the decision, do I sit out and just allow pain to dictate what I think, you know, I could try to overcome, or do I just push through it, which I did play the rest of the season, I ended up separating my right shoulder in the uh, last game of the season, thank goodness. And so and now at this point, the end of the season, I got two separated shoulders. My left shoulder never really healed right because I'm playing through it every week. And my right shoulder is now freshly separated. But at this point, I remember a couple of weeks had gone by and now I'm checking the updated ESPN rankings and they had me as the number one quarterback in the nation in all of junior college. So to go from no scholarships, no rankings in Virginia. And mind you, the Virginia uh, high school all-star game, I was MVP of. So my senior year, it's like we had guys who were five stars going to, you name it, schools, like people who are projected to the NFL out of high school on some, all they got to do is just get two, three years through college. And I was the MVP of that game. So these are moments in time where God just reveals to you like, if you just keep working in the dark, all those actions will come to fruition in the light and they'll be praised in the light. So going to Memphis, 
to me, actually getting to pick what school I wanted to go to. I chose Memphis. I get to Memphis and I end up sitting behind a six foot seven, 240 pound guy who also played quarterback. He ended up being a first round draft pick to the Denver Broncos. So that was another season of life where God was like, I brought you to Memphis, not even to play. I brought you to Memphis to create a, a dry fit shirt that had the word blessed on the side. So that way when players would roll their jerseys up, people would say, oh, blessed, that's pretty cool. Like, what, what does it mean to be blessed? And, you know, over 200, 300,000 people were tweeting about it uh, at a halftime when we played against Ole Miss. So these are moments in time where I'm realizing, okay, God is going to give you a vision or a dream or an objective, and you're not always going to understand exactly how it's going to play out. In my mind, you know, I would have went to Memphis, lit up the scoreboard, went undefeated, get drafted to the NFL. Like, to me, that's what the poster child uh, route would have looked like. But that wasn't the route. It was, okay, Jason, you're going to have to sit behind your roommate and your best friend. You're going to have to support him. But then on the side, you're also going to start entrepreneurship, get into clothing, create an LLC, take what little bit of money that you're getting from college and putting it back into yourself, whether it's learning or getting materials. So then I moved to, I graduated Memphis. I moved to Denver, Colorado. And mind you, there I still got to play at Memphis. You know, I was MVP against Cincinnati. Like I still, there was still opportunities where I got to show I was him on the football field. But these were seasons of life where God was taking the envy out of my heart. God was taking the ego out of my heart and allowing me to understand I could still serve and play my role as backup. And that's not just in football. That's in life. You got to some, sometimes, no, you can't always be the lead scorer, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you got to let your man's do what he does best, support that, and know that it might be a year from now, two years from now, where the roles are reversed. Or now it's your it's your turn to step into that role. But you can't always be the leading scorer. So it's important to know that God's going to require us to be servants a lot more often than we're going to be served. I want to keep going through the journey, but you said so many good stuff, bro. So practically, right, how does a person, how does a, a person, a trader, that's looking to be successful or a person that wants to be successful in the field, right? Because right now we're talking about the football side of your story. How do we stay available to hear those audibles that God, like those audibles that God is calling? Because it seems like you stayed at a position where it's like, yeah, I'm determined. I know what I want to do, but God, I'm available to shift and take advantage of another opportunity that may be present that does not align with what I came here for. So how do you stay like, I guess, just just open to what God wants to do where you are, even though you got plans to do something else. Well, the beauty is knowing that, like, God is the manufacturer and we are his creation. So he created me knowing that I can't just sit around as a backup and not play and have all this energy and ambition and excitement. And I can't just sit on that. So, like, he created me knowing, OK, I'm going to put him in an environment that for the first time in his life, he's going to have to accept not being the guy. And he's still going to have to live with him. Oh, you stay with him. He was your roommate as well. He was my roommate and best friend out on the whole team. So these, these were moments in life where every other team I had played on, for the most part, you know, even in high school, I didn't get to start until my senior year. And the guy who started in front of me, Anton, he was one of my best friends as well. Very good friend of mine to this day. So it's like you go through seasons of life where you have to basically put your pride and ego aside and just trust in the overall greater plan. And because I've had that, that's where a lot of my humility comes from. Mm. It's like I'm used to people all throughout Memphis. Oh, you playing the football team? What position? Quarterback. Do you start? No. Like the amount of times I've had to answer that question where it just is like, I might as well just tell him, like, oh, you play football? Like, yeah, but I don't start. Like, it's like I almost just want to tell him out the gates. And the amount of, uh, the amount of like, like I said, pride and stuff that I had to suppress going from the number one quarterback in the nation where people who I grew up with, they're expecting me to go to Memphis and start or put up some numbers. And I wasn't even worried about the fact that he was 6'7", because I started over a guy in prep school that was 6'6". You know, even at, at um, Fort Scott, I started over a guy who was 6'4", 230 pounds, and had already been at South Florida. And in my opinion, was 
damn near as a, as athletic as a Cam Newton. He just didn't mentally have the self-control at that time to be able to study a playbook, lead a team. There was just he was uh, fighting a lot of things internally, but as far as the gifts were concerned, way more gifted than me. And that's why I loved getting into trading was because football was so based on your physical ability. Trading it was like it doesn't matter how fast your 40 is. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter the politics of a coaching staff. It's literally you put money in, you trade that money, and then you take money out. Yeah, yeah. So you would say the key to making lemonade out of lemon, so to speak, is just embrace it. Humble yourself. Yeah, because you, you basically life is going to put you at a crossroad multiple times. And the crossroad for me in this scenario was I either be a cancer to the team, I either be a cancer to the household I'm living in, like, and he had told me about the quarterback that was there previously and how it, it basically felt like that, where it's like, you know, that that guy was a senior. He was a retro freshman. He was chose to start over the senior. The seniors like having the team go try to sit down with the coaching staff and say the senior should be starting like a lot of these things that take took place. And I'm telling him, like, bro, I'm not going to do none of that because I understood it was never me versus him. Like, at quarterback, you play against a defense. So I was never directly lined up against him. Like, it's like w when I play, it's my job to beat the defense. When he plays, it's his job to beat the defense. If he was a DB and I was a receiver, I would understand that that type of mentality. We got to go against each other. But it was never that. So I had always had nothing but love for the quarterbacks in my, like, QB group and my my quarterback coaches and they knew that too you know I always viewed football just as a business as well so it was easy for me to to take that backseat role mm -hmm. but then once once I graduated Memphis I didn't even show up for my pro day like I skipped my pro day mm. just so overly eager to want to go because mind you while I'm at Memphis with these shirts the shirts got me Meetings with Nike, executive director of Nike, Willie Gregory. The shirts got me a meeting with Brad Martin, who at the time was the CEO of Saks Fifth Avenue. The shirts got me meetings with, with JC Penney's and their wholesaling department. Like there was things that I started to experience and go through and like networking connections that I'm making through clothing before NIL even exists. Like I'm having to really fight and pull teeth to meet with some of these people and so going to move to denver colorado and live with a millionaire who's now playing for the broncos but i'm moving out there with no car and like 2500 to my name and telling him bro i don't want any money like i don't want money from you like me staying here i appreciate that like that's obviously rent i don't have to pay but i don't want money from you because i don't want you to think i'm here for that mm. so me having to try to figure out okay I'm watching my best friend. Just He just got paid M's. I'm watching him take care of his family. You know, pool in the backyard, a, a Labrador, a fence. You know, I'm, saying, I'm seeing additions get made. Mind you, I used to go to, to his parents' house when we were at Memphis together for summer break. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I've seen the, the evolution of it. And I'm like, not, once again, envy is gone. Yeah. I've already proven that. You passed that test. So it's it's so funny, like how God works, bro. It's like like I've already proven that envy is gone. I've already proven that I don't I don't want anything from you. That I'm just here to support. But now the roles are reversed. Now you're paid. I'm not, and I'm trying to figure out what do I do outside of football. Wow. And I end up getting a job at Target because I was tired of the clothing line that was that I was creating that was supposed to be about glorifying God and giving back. I was tired of having to take money out of that project and that operation to sustain my life. I felt guilty because I'm like, this is not what I started this for. Wow. So before so you I get a job at target, 2 uh -huh. AM, 10 AM stocking shelves. I had to walk there. Mind you, it's Denver, Colorado. So around 1 2 AM, it gets really cold, you know, then 10 a.m., it starts to warm up, the sun's coming out, but I would be getting home 
and my two roommates, they would be wanting to go, let's go do something. You know, we're living in a nice townhouse, like three or four levels, something like it was amazing, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was it was fun, but it was it, it got to a point where it's no longer college. And now I'm living out here as a grown man, broke, basically, no car, no real motion. And I also got a girl that I was dating for six years that also lives out there in Denver, but I can't even afford an Uber to go see her. I mm. can't even afford to pay for a, a dinner. But I'm with a millionaire who, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you can see where it became tough because it's like, you're watching one person operate out of abundance, but yep. I know how to play football. You're watching another person, myself, operate out of scarcity because I feel like I'm just trying to stay afloat, trying to keep up, you know? Oh, let's go snowboarding. Let's go let's go out to eat. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And for so long, you'll let another grown man pay for your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got this meal or oh, I got snowboarding today. But then it's like, then you get to a point where it's like, I don't even feel, as an alpha male too, it's like, I don't even feel right, bro. Like, I feel like a child at this point. Like, and it's just, you know what I'm saying? I just, it's not nothing against you. It's just, I got to get right, bro. Like, I appreciate that, but I can't, it's been months now. It's been months now. So I want people, like, real quick, like, I just want to walk through this. So we're talking before trading. We're talking before trading, guys. And a lot of times I say this, QB, that, when you see people winning in an area that they're new in and they win quicker or what some would deem to be faster than the average person's journey, a lot of times you got to tap into what they did and what industry they came out of before they came to that skill set. Because it seems to me that God was like the envy's gone already. You like you come to this school, you're not the guy, you're the backup guy. So God kills the envy. So you're just serving. Hey, and then God's showing you this other outlet. And so you're designing these shirts and you're doing this whole thing. You're meeting with top people. You're doing things <laughs> while you're in school that some people that have graduated decades ago are still trying to do. They're trying to get meetings with Nike. And you're doing that while you're in school playing football, right? And then now school's over. Your friend goes first round draft pick. It seems like to me, I'm gonna let you finish, but it seems like to me that God is showing you like, you deserve better and you can reach better. But you're figuring out things at this time. So I just want to let people know, like, this is before Forex. It's so many things that he's already been through that, man, I'm going to just be honest, man. If I'm going through all them things, I'm like, God, man, come on. You got to give me a break. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're totally right, though, bro. Like, every part of it has has just helped me grow and has been such a, like, pivotal reason for why there has been success. Because after a certain point of like, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, bro. Like I'm every day I'm, I'm depressed. Cause it's like, I'm making $300 a week, but my manager has less credentials than me. Cause mind you, you know, I, I, I was never like, I was never 4.0, but I was 3.6, 3.7. And that was really without applying. Like that was just me showing up, not doing homework and getting good test grades. So it was always that type of like, I knew I was smart. I knew I could apply my, my mindset mentality. And even, that's just book smart too. I don't want to discourage people who don't have good grades because you don't have to have good grades to be successful at trading or anything else. Uh, it's just really about what you apply that mindset to. So I started Googling ways to make money online. This is uh, June of 2017. And I came across this 18 year old kid. And what caught my attention was that he was like traveling all over the world. And to me, I'm like, you're 18. That's really what I wanted was the freedom. It wasn't even I'm like, yeah, I knew I could make good money. Like I'm like, even a six figure job, I felt like I had the credentials and could get my way into something like that. But the freedom of just me seeing him stamp his passport and show off uh, plane tickets. I'm like, you can't finesse that. Like I've been through uh I've been through security, like you, you know what I'm saying. It's that that's if he, if he's finessing that, good, you know, good, good, like good on him. But that's what got me into it. I actually talked to him two or three different times on the phone, and he was telling me about this educational course that he had. And I was telling him, like, I don't know, it sounds kind of because he was like, yeah, I do forex, and I thought it stood for fake Rolex. 
I never had even heard the word before. I knew about stocks, but I never knew about currencies. And he said there was a seven day refund period on the course. And that's actually what got me to commit because I told myself I got a whole week to see if this shit is legit. And if it's not, I'm going to get my money back. And after like day two or day three, I was committed because I'm like, this is real. I felt like Neo entering the matrix where like my eyes had been opened. And I remember even placing my first trade and making $7. And to me, like you would have thought that was my 100K day right there was making seven because I'm like, I made this in literally like five minutes. And that was what, what would take me a whole hour basically mm. at Target. So this became to me the video game that if I learned how to play, if I just could figure out how to use the uh, GTA cheat codes, <laughs> that eventually that money would start printing just in in larger quantities. So June 26, 2017, that was my first day getting involved in trading. And that's when you know it holds weight because when you remember the exact date and time and you know, for two years, I didn't really make money. Like a year and a half, two years, I didn't make money. And it just got to a point where it's like, okay, Stu, we hear you about this trading stuff. You, we see you're telling other people to learn, but where are your results? Mm. And it's like, I'm I'm working on it. Like I'm, I'm every day working on getting results, but it's not that simple. It would be, basically be like a doctor, right? We, we're patient with a doctor. We got plenty of patients with a doctor four to eight years before we need to see any surgery you perform. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. we're patient with them, but when it gets, when it comes to retail trading, two years, you should hang it up. Oh, three years. You should hang it up. Oh, four QB, years, like, even faster than that. I mean, nowadays they want you in 30 months, days. If you in 30 days, weeks, QB, if you ain't making no money, they like give it up. That whole purpose of having people question it was back to the authenticity of the vision because trading to me was that next vision. That's what's so cool about God. At least for my life, he's been consistent about giving me a vision and then basically me having to work towards that vision every day. Even when I don't always feel like I have the most faith, I'm having to just continue to remind myself of these visions that were given. And as I'm going through them, I realize that usually take about two to three years to actually come to fruition. So the first one was obviously division one and then being able to look back on it and realize, wow, it wasn't even for me to play, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change any of it. And then the second one with this trading was just like knowing this is a video game. If you learn how to play, you'll be free. And it wasn't until 2020 to late 2019, early 2020, that I started to actually see or start seeing results. Like around COVID is when results, results started to really pop off. But in between all that, my best friend had basically told me it was time for me to slide from the house over trading and just basically gave me the ultimatum. Like, bro, if you want to keep living here, you got to get a job. Otherwise, I don't know what this, like, it was just, once again, it's 2017, 2018. There's not a lot of people that really know about it like that, you know, and now it's, it's known about in a negative breath or sentence, which I'm cool with, you know, like I can't, I can't change that. It does kind of suck knowing how, like when you know how difficult it is to be good at something and then to see people like on the industry, just because people market it or promote it the wrong way. Um, that part is frustrating because coming from football, you know, if you perform at a high level, there's no like finessing results. Like people will saw will see, okay, he had a great game. He had five touchdowns. He they won. Like, but with trading, it's very smoke and mirrors. Everything is not always what it seems in this industry. And it took me a long time to to it took me like three or four years to start really understanding that and realizing that even mentors and people that I looked up to. Everything is not always what it seems, you know, even profits, withdrawals, a lot of this stuff can be manipulated. But me just being QB stew, you know, like what everything I see, oh, it's, it has to be real. It has to be real. Like I see you got the, you know, the cars and it all has to be real. So 
that's once again, Neo in the Matrix. God will show you the, reveal you the truth. And I'm glad that I went into a gullible because I saw that stuff and, and thought it was possible. Right. And so there was a, a lot of in between time from a six figure day to June 26, 2017. The six figure day was September 2020. Wow. So that's like three years of work and vision and like heartache because my best friend telling me to leave my girlfriend of six years, basically deciding enough is enough. It's time to first to go our separate ways as well, because at this point I had to leave Denver. Mm. You know, and this is where the in between time of I remember being like at a convention in Houston and literally having like sleeping outside um, on like a bench and then also staying at hostels where you could like share rooms and then even like in Denver, st staying in a storage unit for a period of time, sleeping in uh, like at any time fitness, 24 hour fitness bathroom on a yoga mat, um, sleeping in IHOPs because they stay open 24 hours. So, like, I remember this stuff vividly because it's just like, you don't really, like, at that point, I don't really have an option. What's my choices? Yeah. You know, I'm a grown man. Like, I'm an adult. This is just my life circumstance. So, I moved to Erie, Pennsylvania to live with my dad. Mind you, I, I've never lived there. So, I still don't have a lot of friends there. I don't still don't have a car. And now I'm working with him as a carpenter. But I'm still actively, every single day, focused on trading. Wow. And this was a pivotal, like this was probably one of the most important periods of my entire life was because now every single day, it's just me, my dad, us working and like me literally listening to audios and spending time with God because I felt like I was stripped from everything. And one of the most important things that happened was my mom got diagnosed with stage four breast cancer all within like this same two to three month period. So all these like areas of my life, I feel like I'm under attack. And this is even where I like got the most depressed I had been. This is where I even had suicidal thoughts because you're starting to look at your life as like, okay, if the people closest to me are giving up on me, you know, then why should I not give up on me? Yeah, You know, so that's, it was just very symbolic. And that's what the, the thing too is like, God will take you through seasons of life. Where if you look at, at if you look at them for what they are, then you'll see. Okay, I, we were working on the same property every day. The property had flood damage, so we had to remove the internal that was flooded. The external was just fine. The house itself was just fine, but the internal needed to be gutted and then filled back up properly again, so that way it could increase in value and be restored. And that's literally what I was having to do to myself. You preach every single day was having to gut what I thought made me me. Come on, man. That was, that was drowning and flooded. Had to gut that, get rid of that, and then fill myself back up with the Holy Spirit and the things Ooh. that God had already instilled me to be. So Ooh. as this is all happening, I'm like, I would save up for two, three months, load an account, maybe double it and then blow it save up for another two, three months. And mind you, every time I'll blow those accounts, that shit hurt, bro. Like it was just another open wound that I would have to wait for it to scar up. But I just would always ask myself when I thought about quitting, like, bro, I used to go to bingo nights to try to hit a lick and bingo just so I could load up my trading account and, and do numbers. Like the numbers I do now, I used to dream about doing, you know, like truly, and so it's just crazy, bro, like how God will take you on that journey. And I'm on the back of bingo cards, literally drawing out market patterns. Wow. And like what was cool is while my dad and I were going to work every day, I would be playing audios or teaching him about trading or taking trades. And we would be at work and he would even ask me, like, how the trades doing? Da, 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 da. So that's once again, I know not everyone has that kind of support system. Like my dad has always been my best friend. My dad has always been someone that's like, if you want to go after it, I'm not going to be the one to tell you not to, you know? Yeah. And that has been so powerful because it's like, even when it didn't make sense, he was at least willing to hear it out and like try to understand. And most, so many people are so afraid of what they don't know. 
And this is when I also learned too, it's like people can give you the wrong advice coming from the right place. So like your best friends or your family members, they could be telling you that, that it's a waste of time, but that's not out of a place of hate. That's out of a place of not uh, understanding, you know? And so that's just important because it's almost just like, take it for what it is, you know, but don't allow that to, they're not supposed to see the vision that God gave you. You know, you're supposed to see that. That's it. That's it, man, bro. You sent chills through my body when you like, I already knew where you were going when you did that analogy, when you was talking about the house, everything on the outside was perfect, but that, mm -hmm. that interior, you need to gut it out. You know, it need to be gutted. It need to be redone. And when you started going there, I, bro, I just started feeling that in my spirit. So a lot of things here, but number one, you got introduced to trading and you found out about the skill set. You found someone online, started connecting. You got this course on a seven day trial. You're now going through this course, right? So as you're going through this course, what were you doing for money? And what was the balance between what you were doing at that time for money and you actually being in the charts? Like, was it more chart time hours, as little as possible to work and get some money to put in the market? Or was it kind of 50, 50? Like, what was that process like? I mean, for the most part, when I was living at Denver, I didn't have uh, too much overhead. Like I still, obviously, like I said, I didn't even have a car. So not having a rent, not having a car, I wasn't even paying for health insurance. Like I was keeping my overhead as low as possible, but that still is like when you're still having to try to keep up with someone who has, and at that point in time, what we all viewed as like unlimited money. Cause we were living life and happy off $1,200 a month that Memphis was giving us. And like I said, this was pre NIL. I couldn't just go ask, you know, a, a, a company, let me, a, a, a business in Memphis, let me do, let me, let me do some social media stuff for you guys real quick. Like we weren't allowed to get paid, period. You know, even our next door neighbor, if we did yard work and service, like we had to be very careful about what we got paid. And it's just like, it was just crazy the grip that the NCAA had on players. Now you see guys getting bags bro and like for me being the number one quarterback in the nation out of juco i would have got offered a bag like so for me to know that there's seasons of life that you just can't change and, uh, and i wouldn't change them because it's like if i didn't if i just got a bag would i have ever really focused on trading and tapped into that mm, something you know about. or would i just have mismanaged it and then just ended up finding a job that you know like okay i'm, I'm happy doing but that's what I'm saying. Our calling is our calling. Like, uh, whatever, like whatever we're going through, I love that time stands for things I must experience. So I would just remind myself as I'm going through time, even to this day, like this is something that God has called for me to experience. And I don't need to look at that in any light other than the light that it is. And that's the light of truth. So as long as I understand that, like what I am right now is is all that I'm worth right now. So like even the results that people don't yet have, it's just because you're not yet that person that is qualified to get those results. And so the failure and learning growth and learning curve, the blown accounts, the people telling me it's a waste of time, like all of that stuff is literally accumulation to continue to create and like make me the person I am to this day. So now to the point, yeah, you, you know, like, I, and after a year and a half there, I mean, to answer your question as well, just like I was just working jobs. Like yeah. I would do even do graphic design from home, cover art. I would do cover art for, for musicians, like anything that I could still do to try to make some type of side income. And then working as a carpenter, I was getting paid around 18 to $20 uh, per hour. So whatever money I could make, I was just taking and then, just trying to load up an account, keep my overhead as low as possible. But I wasn't, I didn't even see, really see a, a withdrawal for like a profitable withdrawal. I had even um, taken money out that I had initially deposited, you know, like just to make sure, okay, can I actually withdraw this? But as far as profiting in the market and seeing more come out than what I put in, I, I didn't start seeing that until 2019, mm. uh, 2020. And that's also around the time that I had moved to Atlanta. Yeah. So, 
spending like around a year and a half in Erie. I love that because I'm with my dad every day. But my dad understood, too, that like I wanted to go get my time back as far as I might not be making as much money out the gates. But if I can devote 24 hours a day, not 24, I still got to sleep. But if I can devote my time, my full fledged time and effort to trading and marketing and and um, social media and stuff like that then just how much further can I go? And that also puts the pressure on too of like, don't be wasting time now. You know what I'm saying? It's now or never now. So, but I got blessed too, because the NCAA, they had owned me, they owed me a check from the football game. Mm. But I get that check in 2019. You see the timing of it? Right when you're making that move. Right when I'm making the move, bro. I went, I moved down there with 500 in the air mattress and I was having like breathing issues. This was pre-COVID. This was like like um September, October of 2019. I don't know if it was anxiety or what it was, but I literally went down there with my – I picked up Dante. I drove from Erie to Pens- uh, Philadelphia, which is the other side of Pennsylvania. Picked up Dante, my best friend we had met in Vegas at a convention, and he was full-time trading and networking and all that stuff as well. So he had actually was the one who told me, like, yo, bro, like, I got to I'm getting a house down in Atlanta. If you want to come move in, like we can fully lock in and just go get after it. And that's what we did. So I picked him up in a rental and had my stuff, had his stuff. We get down there. And I was only there like a day or two. And I'm like, I got to go back, bro. Like I'm having breathing issues. I need to see a doctor. And then within a week or two of going back, I get this check from the NCAA. And it was six bands. And that's like, that was really like the stimulus and you know what I'm saying? That really uh, changed a lot for me because then I took 1.5 to 15K trading. And that also was while I was like doing Q's Torch Challenge. And he wanted to he wanted to see people take um, 3K on demo and trade it and show good risk and everything. But I did 1.5 live and took it to like 15 or 16 and was tagging him throughout the whole build. So like he saw what was going on and then he had a five day in person and so I went to that, got the A plus, and um, even after that, bro, like I blew my next two or three accounts. Mm. Even after getting the A plus, because I was so overconfident. Now I'm like, the goat just co-signed me, said I'm an A plus student. You know, like he he basically just told me my technicals are as good as they can get. And so now I'm going back into the market, just thinking I can't lose and. I'm over leveraging. Um, so, you know, 2020 rolls around, COVID happens, and I took had 4K that I took 4K to 64K in four days. And it was on EU and GJ. But mind you, the next week, I, I, I didn't close out. I let those trades float going into the weekend because I had just seen Dante, my, my, my housemate, in Atlanta. I just seen him have a six-figure day off the same trades. Right, like we're sitting in the living room, and mind you, we're in East Point, Atlanta, not 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 the nicest neighborhood off Campbellton. You know what I'm saying? Like we're kind of in we're kind of in the hood, type shit. And you know, I'm watching him have a six figure day. I'm taking four to sixty four in four days, and this is once again greed. You know, like my I'm seeing a hundred k. My man's just did, so I'm like, all right, I want I want to touch a hundred as well. So the next week comes rolls around. I'm dropping rec. I'm just recklessly dropping 10, 20 lots on trades because I'm like, I got I got the equity. But as those trades start to retrace and lose equity, I'm also taking 10 lots, 20 lots losses. So before I know it, bro, the whole account, like the whole account is gone. So it's like then I'm over here, like literally crying for three days about. 64,000 because that's way more than I had in my bank account. Mm. So I just remember talking to my dad on the phone and him saying like, because I would always have affirmations on the back of my phone that I would read out loud. And I would read out loud, I am a seven-figure trader. I am a seven-figure trader. And so he was like, why are you crying over 6%? (laughs) He did not go there. He did not go there. He did. He has to remind me. He was like, why are you crying over 6%? And that's once again, you know, it's like because I hadn't even 
uh, acquired the I'm a six figure trader. And I used to say that. I, I used to say I'm a six figure trader. I'm a six figure trader. But it's like I just came to realize that the only difference between six and seven is one number. Like it's it's like it's all about belief. It's like so so often we'll say six. We'll say six figure trader because we've never touched six. But then you touch six and you're like, dang, like, OK, I touched it. But like, was it really that hard to touch? So like, why didn't I say seven? It's just I didn't have the belief level to think I could go straight to seven. You know, so it's like even the six figure day that I ended up having. So fast forward, I had like dropped a course. I had dropped this community. God had basically I felt like he put it on my heart to give my course free to all of my high school alumni and all my college alumni. So if like if I had gone to school with you, which was most of my network, it's free. And I'm like, dang, like, uh, you know, I just, I spent weeks making this course and now I got to give it away for free. And so I do that. But then once again, you know, God, he keeps a tab. Yep. So it's like everything that you did, like I'm going to take care of on the back end. And then September of 2020, um, I took some shorts on EU on a Wednesday and ended up closing out on a Monday morning. But yeah, 103,000 in a day. But I, I also say that to say, like, had I already touched six or seven figures and I, had I maintained that order, like I would maintain any other order, that would have been 200 plus. It would have been like probably 240. Mm. So it just goes to show as well, like, you know, it's just levels and stages that you got to constantly be going through. And I'm still, I'm so glad I closed it out because it's like to even my biggest. That was one of the greatest moments of my life because I FaceTime my mom, I FaceTime my dad, I FaceTime Dante. And just to share that with them, people are like, How did you celebrate? Like, did you go pop bottles? Like, I'm like, that was the celebration. Like, like to me, just getting to, to like, especially my mom being sick and her to know, like, my son, my son is a success. Like, my son said he was gonna get into trading. And now look at him. You know, and like my dad, same thing, him being there every day with me, watching me grow as a trader, blowing accounts, him knowing like if I was up trading late last night, he'll see I'm sleepy or he'll see I'm upset because I probably blew my shade like last night didn't go so well. And of course, I'm not one to let him down either. So like all of these things, you know, because, you, you know, as a trader, when you start to get start hitting some wins, then you know, he's ex just as excited to see my account in the morning as he's like, all right, what, what's it looking like today? And now exactly. I'm like, Dang, I don't even want to show him. My shit's gone. <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> him being supportive of that whole thing to then me finally be able to call him and be like, I just did 103 in a day. And so there's bigger days on the horizon. I know I don't think, you know, even whether it's, you know, a seven-figure day or an eight-figure day, like, the, the number is just a number at this point. And that's also why I get so much um, joy out of serving. And just, you see at the FX Summit, it's like there wasn't a person I didn't take time to talk to, bro, because I know that every single person is that same person that I was, bro. Like two and a half years and just not seeing daylight. Just feeling like, dang, bro, like when am I finally going to see it? Like, I see, and that's the worst part about social media. I see this person seeing that. I see this person seeing that. Everyone seems like everyone sees it except for me. And I'm still telling people about this light, but I haven't even seen it myself. So to finally see the light and know that I, I still can't even guarantee the next person's light is just why I'm so adamant about just like wanting to push people in the direction of God because on days where no person, no human can give you light, he can. And it's like, that's what will lift you up. I totally agree, man. And I just want to jump in and say this, man. Your mom, your dad, even Dante, you FaceTiming them and that being your celebration, it just shows that you want to let them know, hey, I'm giving you a return on your investment. All y'all invested into me. You know, y'all helped me push through this journey. And I just want to let y'all know, we did it. We did it. Exactly. Man, that's beautiful, bro. You talk about how you were flipping accounts, 4K to 64, 1500 to 15K. Um, and you messed it up because you started over leveraging. What's the key? And do you still recommend flipping accounts? Or what's the key to it with proper risk management? Is it adding positions as you go into profit? 
What has been the key for you to build those smaller accounts? I think risk appetite is very important. Like people have to know what they can handle that's not going to like completely decide or dictate their entire day. Like I've been around traders that if they're in drawdown, their whole day is drawdown. If they're floating profit, their whole day is floating profit. And it's just too much of an emotional roller coaster to be around. Not if not even if it's someone else, but even yourself. Like you don't want to you don't want your life to mere trade your trades. Like you know, and it's like difficult to do because a lot of us are trading from home or we're like trade we're ha- we're tra- in trades but we're at work or like you know, it's like having to navigate the emotions of losing a trade or winning a trade. And not getting too high or too low. But once again, my football background helped me with that because if I throw a touchdown, I can't come out the next drive thinking that, like, I'll never throw a pick. Because once I throw an interception, then now I can't put my head down and and have my teammates feeling like I'm giving up on them, you know. So it's such a – and I wear my heart on my sleeve, you know. Like, I'm such a passionate person that it's – it was very difficult for me to be able to control my emotions and focus on the next play. Especially since I have uh, not a photographic memory, but I can replay. Like I could play a whole football game and then somebody asked me about a play and I can replay it in my mind. Uh, similar to how LeBron has play recognition and, and replay. Like he can literally tell you about three, four possessions in a row, exactly what happened to the detail. And I can do that as well. So, in trading, it's funny, too, because, you know, you'll take a buy and you'll get out at a certain area and then you'll watch either price come back and you'll feel like a genius because you got out or you'll watch price continue to run and run and run and you'll feel like, why did I ever close? So it's like a c- constant battle mentally um, of wanting to just continue to start your day in gratitude and just know, like, if I if if you and we've all heard the would you accept $10 million, but the condition is you can't wake up tomorrow. And we all agree, like, nah, like, I would choose to wake up tomorrow versus get paid $10 million. Like, it's really not that deep. So once we all have that understanding, then we realize how precious and valuable each day is. And so that's just allowing me to move a lot differently. You know, it's allowing me to move accordingly to um, you know, what God, what do you have called for me today? What like what purpose and direction do you want me to move in today? And I'm just gonna keep trusting in you. You know, even my even my binder, like my binder says seek first on it. And I used to have all these goals and all these IPAs and all this stuff written on it, just as like a work, 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 work. But this year God just told me to seek, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else will be given to you. Because God already knows what's on our heart. Like, he already knows what our real desires are. But that's why he's just saying, seek first the kingdom. And righteousness is to be in right standing with God. So whenever we sin, we we end up in wrong standing. But thank goodness we can repent and ask for forgiveness, and he'll forgive us. And then just like that, we're back in right standing. So it's a beautiful relationship to have when you understand that. But we don't also want to take advantage of that either. You know, it's just like, otherwise, then it's like, Okay, so you know it's wrong, but you keep doing it, you know. So, but that's the battle of the flesh and the spirit. And in trading, it's the same thing that you have to battle the flesh. I want to make six figure days every single day. I want to be flipping accounts and get all the recognition and notoriety and be making all this money. But then you have the spirit that's like you know better. Like you still plan on waking up tomorrow and having an account. You you even I love that scripture Ecclesiastics. Invest your money in foreign trade for one day, you will make a profit. One day, not two day, not, not two day, <laughs> but one day, you know. So it's like that whole concept of you never know what disaster may come upon the land. But what is the land? The land is our bank accounts. The land is us having a job. The land is our house, you know, like whatever it may be. So that's why I just ask each day, you know, I pray and ask God just to continue to help me steward better over what you're giving me. Because like, if I can't steward over it, that's why I love my last name, Stuart. And my 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 mission statement in life is I am God's steward artist. So I would like even with these jerseys that we're about to release, it's like I'll have to steward over all of that properly, you know. And it's like God has given me ideas and designs and a vision to basically create a whole roster full of, you know, athletes and 
I'm excited because even that, you know, it's like it won't be a Nike jersey. It won't be Adidas. It, like it'll literally have the cross above the number on the back of the jersey and pictures of their whole life in, inside. And just like literally a, a walking testimony as a clothing item. And so I just can't wait for that type of stuff. But I just know, you know, you're talking about having to steward over things properly. And it's like if we can't handle 10,000 properly, then why would we expect God to give us 100,000? Like, you know how much bigger of a hole, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why would he give you a bigger sho shovel? I totally agree. You know, you just mentioned the Jersey. Share with us your passion project and what you got going on and how you guys are using this to give back to the community. Yeah, so, you know, like um, the gl Glory to God blessed shirts that I was doing in Dry Fit, um, uh, I had to put that whole concept and idea on the back burner when I got into trading because I was like, if I just get good at trading, then this can fuel my passion projects. So I, I wasn't expecting to get back into football. I wasn't, you know, I was retired for four or five years uh, before the FCF happened in Atlanta, Georgia. It just so happens that the, you know, the hotel is five, 10 minutes from where I live that the whole league is staying in. Like th these are things that you just can't make up, you know, and, and um, destroying being an owner of a team. And the fact that like both games that he comes to film, I'm the opposite quarterback. Like there's just things that you just can't make up. You know, I got traded for Terrell Owens. I started over Johnny Manziel. Like there's just things in life that God would like reward you on the back end football wise that I felt like I never got to really sh like prove myself at Memphis. So it's crazy how trading made me a better football player because then I go into playing professional football after being retired for five years, literally rolled off the couch, didn't train for it. But mentally, trading had been training me for all that time. And then I go and play and it's just like, it was just the chess work, you know? It's like, like I said, it's never been my physical abilities that have just made me seem like the cream of the crop. It's always been my mindset and mentality. It's like that dog that I have in me that just like the Mamba mentality or Jordan, you know, in the finals, like you have to rise to that occasion mentally. And at that point, there's nothing to hide behind. You know, I knew that destroying cameras were going to get millions of views. Like, so it's either I do what I say I'm going to do and hold, you know, stand on that. Or I look extremely goofy and let let my entire like city down and let Memphis down and let all my coaches like that's I don't just think about me I'm thinking about everyone that's behind me that's like okay when Stu wins we win and so trading had really helped with that but what right now this uh the jerseys are basically we're going to different um influencers or athletes and we're doing these really nice stitched jerseys um, that basically we I take pictures of their whole life and I put them inside of their number. And so wh whatever city or hometown they're from, they'll have the state flag um, as basically their logo. It says believe on the front and then it has like their hometown uh, stitched on the hip. But we're going to be donating m most of the profits to somebody like people in that in those communities and do like a Mr. B style giveaway. So, you know, if we do a jersey for somebody from Memphis, Tennessee, then, you know, we'll give back a lot of those profits to somebody randomly in Memphis that could really benefit. So that's once again, back to like, and what's cool too, is we're going to be, um, the jerseys are actually going to be partnered with uh, NFT and uh, the ownership will already be built into the jersey. So when you get a jersey, all you're going to have to do is take your phone, you tap the tag on the jersey, and it will literally pull up the NFT, your ownership of the actual physical jersey. It'll say your name. It'll say the order number out of the athlete. You know, let's say it was a thousand jerseys sold for Tony Pollard, the running back for the Memphis Tigers. Then you'll know exactly you got number 432. And if you ever decide to sell that jersey, then you can literally sell the rights digitally to someone. All they have to do is purchase that NFT. You give them the physical jersey. Now they have the NFT and the physical. So they're both paired together. And that's something I'm really excited about because guess what? That 5% resale, 
right back to the business allows us to keep giving more. So I understand that only allowing people to purchase the jersey for seven days, that creates the urgency. That causes people to have to buy or you won't be able to get it unless you buy on the resale. But that's going to increase the value for all the people who do buy. And then when people resell, then we're getting that 5% back. And so I want to offer uh, the athletes ownership of their percentage cash back as well on every resale too. So that's what I'm saying, bro. It's like, it's like, man, it's like people have no idea, bro. Like I got athletes lined up, bro. Like even when I was doing the blush shirts, I was designing for Odell Beckham, uh, Von Miller, Lamar Jackson, Larry Fitzgerald, Mark Ingram, Todd Gurley. Like, it's like the, the beauty of having a good product is when you just put the Costco sample out there and people walk along, hmm, wait, 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 I need a bag of this. That's it. Where can I where, where can I get some of this? So that's what I'm excited about is like being able to create a really cool product, steward over that capital properly, um, inject it back into communities and give back and capture, you know, that type of um those type of moments, because I understand, like, like even it could be five hundred dollars, bro. Like people don't realize, five, like four or five hundred dollars goes a long way. I was just down in Colombia, bro. Like other countries too, bro. This, this amount of money goes a long way. So if we can bless someone with five k, ten k, twenty k, fifty k, like who knows? You know what I mean? It's like you never know. You never know until until it actually starts happening. But I agree. that's what I'm excited about. And I want people to just like I want everyone right now. Just look at that excitement that's on his face when he started talking about this passion project, right? And that's what trading does. You know, I had this little rant uh, QB that I went on in one of the communities that I'm in, and we're all kind of growing together. And I was just like, guys, like, we got to understand, like, if you look at all the top traders, and I threw your name in there as well, because to me, you are a top trader. Um, and I'm just like, if you look at them, none of them just sit and look at screens all day. They all have multiple businesses. They all have passion projects. They all have, you know, something that trading has allowed them now to focus on, to give back and serve others. And it's just seeing your excitement when you talked about your project, your baby that you're working on and how you want to help people and that joy that you get knowing that it's going to make a difference in people's lives is what I was alluding to. So could you just drop some more wisdom on how trading is just, it's just one step on your journey. Like just share with the audience how trading is just one step on their journey and how there's other things that they've been called to do to serve their community or serve other communities that they probably haven't even thought about reaching yet that God has lined up for them to touch and be a part of. I know for some people like trading is all they have, but for me, it was never the case. Like for me, trading was just something that I felt like I was forced into. Like, I didn't even like trading for my first six months to a year, but I just kept saying, like, what else out there is going to allow me to press buttons and literally watch money multiply? So it was the understanding of that is what kept me around the game. But I was never so, like, I want to be the best trader ever. Like, I was never, oh, I went to school for trading. I was never, oh, my, my I have family members that already make millions trading. Like, it was never any of those things for me. So... Even, you know, getting back into playing football and wanting to excel at a high level, I had to put trading down for a little bit because I knew I couldn't just show up and give half my attention and focus. I had to, the same thing that made me great in trading, I had to go back and give that to football. And I understand that, like, even when um, Instagram started allowing people to make money on the bonus reels, I saw opportunity because with the memes... I've been posting memes for years. Like I genuinely enjoy it because it's going to make people laugh. It's going to make people cry, smile, think, you know, like it's, it, the, I just enjoy the, the mental like stimulation from what like people can get with having a, the right visual and the right audio. And so within six months bro, I did over half a billion views. That's insane. Just, just off memes organically, you know, through Instagram. Like, and it's like, I wish I had done it on YouTube because YouTube will pay forever. Instagram, they were only paying me for that 30 day window. So I had it literally all reverse engineered where it's like, if I can post 150 reels within this 30 days, then I'm like, okay, well, I want all, I want 150 reels posted within the first 20. So that last 10 days 
it's like all those seeds can just be growing and growing and growing. And so it's like, but once again, for that six months that I'm posting memes, then my trading community is like, what's up, bro? Why are you not trading? And it's like, but I'm watching my page grow and I'm seeing the traffic that is producing. And I'm like not knowing, oh, at some point, Instagram will stop paying for bonus reels. I'm like looking at how this could be scalable because I was getting paid some months anywhere from five to seven K. And it's like, that's a great additional stream of income just by posting videos and my page is growing. It's creating more traffic, more people clicking on my link. Like all of these things make sense, you know? So it's once again, there's going to be people like it's constantly going to be people questioning why you're making the moves that you're making, even acting in movies. I'm getting into now. I've been wanting to do them for a long time, but it's stages. Public speaking, same thing. I'm having to, I'm, I'm starting to look to find a manager, somebody who can literally book me for the engagements. It's not about me making all the money. Like it's not even about the money. It's just like get me booked. Just put like put me in the game, coach. <laughs> I love so, it, man. As long as people know they have more like this this trading is mo most people don't just have the gift of trading. It's usually a skill that had to be acquired through repetition, wins and losses, et cetera, et cetera. So God did put other gifts in. So it's just about people searching for those gifts if they don't already know them or developing gifts that haven't fully yet been harnessed. And then that will allow you to understand, oh, I actually can go do this. You know, I can I can start a YouTube. I can be a chef. You know, you don't just have to be a trader. So people should just focus on on their passions and, and pursue that daily, just trying to get better. This podcast is mainly for new beginner and developing traders. Um, what advice would you give to us, man? What advice, what encouragement would you give to us knowing your journey, knowing the things you've been through? And of course, I know you got more goals in trading um, that you want to reach. And I know you are humble and you're going to say, hey, I'm still on the journey too. But you are definitely somebody that you are, to me, a poster child of what can happen when you when you just allow your time to play out. You allow that faith. You allow what you ask God for to just play out. You know, you are a poster child for just show up, put in the work, go hard, and just trust God, right? What advice would you give to us um, just knowing what you've put in and you have gotten to that point where it's like, hey, I don't have to worry about how I'm going to eat tomorrow. Like I'm not in that place anymore. God has, has definitely promoted me to a new level. What advice would you give to us that may be in that stage right now where we don't know how we're going to afford um, uh, the next meal or the next living situation. And we really have a desire to grow in trading. What advice would you give to us? Um, I wish, I mean, it's just always back to patience, you know, and I know it's like tough to hear because it's, it, it never ends. You know, I love that the Bible talks about chasing the money, chasing money is like chasing the wind. You can never catch it. So it's like, I get and I love that God has put me through those experiences because when people talk to me about that, I can relate. Like, I get it. It's like not a lot of people can look at someone and say, I get it and actually get it. So that's why I keep saying I know patience is not an easy like uh, answer to, to get, but that's just what it is. And it's just you have to look at it the same as weightlifting, not to say I've ever been the strongest person, but I do understand the concept of like, if you work out every day for three weeks, but then you take two weeks off, almost all of those three three weeks of work are kind of like down the drain. So that's why I think it's important that people, if trading is something that you really do want to get like full-time income from, then you have to give a, a full-time level of devotion and commitment. And that's not to say that that means you got to be spending eight hours a day, but all that separates any of us is just what we know and our confidence. And like, that's really it. It's like, there's only so much you can know about supply and demand. There's only so much you can know about fibs and extensions. There's only so much you can know about moving averages, trend lines, uh, fundamentals. Like at the end of the day, you can know all of it and still have to make a decision and still have to live with the fact that you could still be wrong. So if so many people are trying to get this like bulletproof strategy, when in reality, it's just like, take your L you know, roll it up, smoke it, and focus on the next one. Like, have that same mentality of, okay, as long as I followed my rules, as long as I didn't, 
like go against what I have written out to like for, for me to actually follow, then there's no reason I should just be one to throw in the towel, you know? But most of the time we do over leverage. Most of the time it is greed. It is wanting to hit that big, big trade. So it's just it's just always back to that. Just trying to overcome your flesh, overcome your immediate desires, overcome the decision making that ultimately leads us to the result we don't want. And so, you know, that just comes in in listening, hearing the right thing. You know, I was reading scripture earlier. I was I was in the book of Luke and I love that it was uh, Luke 23, chapter 23, verse five. And it was basically talking about how Jesus would stir up the people. They, they were claiming that Jesus would stir up the people with his teachings. And I love that, bro. I'm like, people getting stirred up over what they're learning, like, that's fire. Like, it's like you, you're you hearing this man talk and you're stirred up to want to take action. And that's all I, that's really all I look to do when I speak is to cause people to feel something, to want to go do something, like. You know, I heard a quote one time. People don't remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel. So I just try to get people to feel something, whether it's through my content, whether it's through my podcast, whether it's through this trade setups. Like it doesn't whether it's through football, like I just want people to feel something and go after that and know that that's something that they're probably feeling is most likely the Holy Spirit or God. So just stay close to that, protect that, hold on to that and just allow that to navigate you. And document the journey. So many people are afraid to document because they're like, oh, I'll wait till I get there. But your most valuable clips, like look at Kanye's doc. To me, the most valuable clips are when they're telling him to leave. Like, no, nah, I'm sorry. We listened to it. We, no, nah, I'm not really hearing much. I'm not, there's not, I'm, nothing's really resonating with me that you're a star. That's the most valuable clips. His mom, Donda, telling him, just keep going. Like, we believe in you, you know? The Those are the most valuable clips. So just turn your phone on and say, "I'm tell yourself I'm documenting, even if I don't release the footage for a year, two years, three years. At least let me document my truth and know that in a couple of years I'll be able to stand on this truth." You know, that's why my Vegas video, literally walking through, you know, against traffic with my full luggage on. I got a suit on. You could tell I haven't shaved. Like it's like it's just receipts, bro. Like, and I'm saying I have three dollars to my name. But these are seven figure feet. Come on. That's conviction. That's faith. You know, and it's not not every day looks like that. But on the days that you are are carrying the energy, carry it. You know, walk in it. Like that's that's the Holy Spirit giving you strength, giving you giving you a vision that not everyone else is supposed to see. But as long as you can see it, you can hold it in your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, QB Stew, man. QB, I want you to do three things before we get out of here. Number one, let them know where they can follow you on socials and all of that stuff. And then number two, if there was anything that I didn't cover that you got on your heart um, that you personally want to share or put out there, it could be anything, I want you to share that. And number three, I want you to close us out with a prayer, brother. I got you, bro. First and foremost, um, thank you for even having me on here, bro. Like, like I said, I remember even doing events and I would have people like, are, like, are, how do we know people are going to show up? And I'm like, bruh, it only matters if one person shows up. Like if one person shows up and we can change their life, then that's mission accomplished. So with these type of podcasts, it's like, that's how I view it is one person can show up. And if they just something that they hear clicks or whatever it may be that just shifts their life um, to me, that's worth it. So QB Stew on all platforms, QB S T E W, like quarterback stew. And um we covered everything for the most part, bro. Like I know, you know, at some point there will probably be a book written or a movie made to try to capture the timeline of all of this. But the biggest thing that I just want to always get across is that people just uh explore their faith and just go to God because there's no trading um there's no like strategy I could give you that will make you bulletproof. There's no fo formula I can give you in relationships that will make you bulletproof. Like no, there's just no full answer for even the like tough days that are going to be there for you. Like the Bible will be because it says in the beginning was the word and the word was God. So when I read the word out loud, I know I'm talking with God. Like, and so it says faith comes by hearing the word. So I know I have to be hearing it out loud. 
for my faith to increase, you know? So don't read that Bible quietly, like really hear it, you know, even if you're playing it on audio or whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and end this joining the prayer. And once again, when you're praying to God, I want people to keep in mind that you can just have a conversation, you know, like uh, a lot of time early for me, praying was difficult because I wouldn't know, oh, I got to use these big words or I got to, I got to say it a certain way. And I learned that you can just come to God as your best friend, come to him as your father, come to him as, as, as a psychiatrist, as a therapist, just come to him as you are, because he created you with with er, like literally every detail, every hair on your head. He didn't he he didn't make you with anything that he didn't plan on making you with. So, dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, I just appreciate you allowing us to have a platform that there be ears to hear this prayer, that there be ears and an open heart to receive this type of message. And just continue to remind every person listening that you did not create them with defects. You you created them with everything that they need in order to be successful. And allow us, Father God, to just view success in a different light, not based on how much money we acquire or material items that we get, but just on the lives and, and impact that we're able to make over the entire world, the inspiration that we can give people just in hearing your name and just continue to bring you to the forefront, Father God. And I just pray that every person that's struggling right now, whether they don't know where their next meal is coming from, they don't know, they just got laid off from jo their job. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe their family doesn't think that the, the direction that they're heading on will be worth it. Father God, I just ask that you blanket them. Uh, Jesus, we call you the Prince of Peace. So I ask that you give them peace throughout this journey and you just continue to remind them that you are with them every single step of the way. Hebrews 13, 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear for what can man do to me? So I just ask that every person listening to this they continue to remind themselves that you are with them. There's nothing that man can do to us um, and that we all just continue to seek the kingdom and its righteousness. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, bro. QB Stu, for it to begin a podcast. Listen, as I always say, uh, we look forward to running into you at the bank one day, but you cannot meet us there. You got to beat us there. When me and QB pull up, you should be walking out, duffel bag on your shoulder, big smile on your face, because we just believe we all going to be successful. Till next time, God bless you. Take care and Peace.